Hey everyone, this is Ashley with CT Arena Digitals. I am going to be doing a couple of sample images um, with my newborn digital backdrops um, that are in my shop for you guys. Um, I'm going to do one that um, matches the fur. I'm going to do one without fur and I'm also going to do one that doesn't um, match for you guys. It is always best to try to photograph baby on the same layer that you're going to be um, using in or whatever's in the digital. It's best to photograph baby on the same layer or similar because it makes it a lot easier when trying to do the composite. Okay, so this is the image that I'm starting with, um, which actually was is also a digital, um, but I'm going to take the baby out of this one. Let's go over and just go to your selection tool. I'm just going to use quick select. Actually, maybe not. I'm going to try select subject first. Sometimes it selects. Yeah, that was that didn't work either. Um, so I'm going to use the quick selection tool. You can use the lasso tool, magnetic lasso tool, um, whatever you prefer. I'm not going to get the edges perfect because it takes a while sometimes, but I do want to get it as close as I can. Um, and for using the same fabric, it's okay to get more of it in the selection because it should match pretty good. Edit, copy, and paste. Okay, so very important. Make sure that the light is falling on the baby the same as it's falling on the digital. So as you can see on the digital, the light is coming from the upper right um, corner or pretty much like right here. Um, so baby is the right way for this one. You can turn him a little bit if you feel like feel like that is good right there. Okay, so now that he's in there, um, you can either so go ahead and create a, la a layer mask. You can either invert it and try to. Um, use a white brush to paint him in, which I like to do. Um, or you could leave the layer as is and use a black brush to paint away, which we'll do that for this one since it matches pretty good. And I'm using a bigger um, brush right now because I do want to kind of feather this out um, and then I will paint his his um, body back in as needed. And this helps with shadows too. I won't need to add as much shadow. Um, Okay, so now I'm going to make it smaller, change it to white, and I'm going to paint back in his body and parts that I painted it off. Here's your backslash tool, and you can see if you missed any, oops, <clears throat> any areas. Okay. 
Now I'm going to clean up <clears throat> these edges right here. Smaller brush, black. You don't want really sharp, clean lines um, because realistically, this part of the body is blurred, so um, you want it to look like that. Just switching between black and white to paint on, paint on. Like I said, I'm not going to, this needs cleaned up too, um, but you could also grab the blur tool and just make sure he's selected and just blur it out a little bit and it probably wouldn't even be <clears throat> noticeable in most parts. But you want to do this anyways, so... Now I'm going to duplicate my background layer just because if I make any mistakes I don't want it to be completely ruined. And I'm also going to blur um, the layer right here because it would be um, if this image were to be out of camera. Okay, now as you can see, we need some shadow down here. So I am going to create a new layer and then merge these two layers together. And then I'm going to go down to um, add drop shadow. Um, blend mode multiply. And this right here, the angle is where the light is coming from. So we want it like over here, like a 45, maybe like a little less degree angle. And you can play around with it and see um, what looks more pleasing to the eye. So when adding shadow, um, you want to do a color that is similar to the layer that you're working with. So it looks more realistic. I'm going to go pretty dark because this is a pretty um, moody shadows in the digital, so I want to match that. Um, this is the opacity. I'm going to bring that all the way up. And then um, this is the distance um, from what, so you can kind of see over here the distance off of the football. You want to kind of do the same thing for um, for the baby. So that looks good right there. Spread, I don't really ever, ever use that. Um, size, this is, um, you're going to want this pretty high too. You, you're going to want like a softer shadow. And I think that, I think that looks good right there. Press OK. And now um, I'm going to create a new layer above the background layer. I'm going to change the blending mode to multiply because I still want to add even a little bit more shadow. Um, in some areas. So I'm going to go ahead and get my brush, sample one of the a darker color, um, opacity like 10%, and then I'm going to brush in some more shadow in a couple places. And then you can just take that away if you don't, um, if you don't like it, or you can create a layer mask and you can paint some of it off. Okay, there is a couple. I'm going to create a layer mask on him again because there's some of the fabric left that I want to get rid of because it's lighter than I want it to be. There. Okay. 
And I'm always working with a soft brush, never, um, never a hard brush. Keep seeing spots that. Okay, and I actually want to add a little bit more shadow. Um, by his hand right here. Okay. And I think that looks pretty good. We can do, um, merge these. Oop, don't want to do that, actually. So, before, after. Flatten. And that's that one. Now, I'm going to... Um, I'm going to unflatten that because I'm actually going to copy this layer. So I can just take it right over um, to here. So I don't have to do the selection again. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and paste. And you can... Um, you can change all the um, drop shadow colors and stuff still on this if you leave, <clears throat> don't flatten it before you copy and paste it into this one. Okay, so now the light is coming from the left in this one. So either you can flip um, the baby or you can flip the digital. I do recommend, um, it doesn't really matter for me right now, but I do recommend probably flipping the digital. Um, that way you're not flipping the baby if they have any certain features that um, parents are going to notice if you do that. Okay. I think that looks good. Okay, so obviously our shadows are coming from the wrong way too, so go ahead and click on um, your effects. Go to drop shadow, change the direction of the light. And now this is distance a little bit too much, so I'm going to take that back a little. I'm going to change the color to a dark green. Okay. And let's see size here. And I just, I'd play around with this um, until it looks like it's right out of the camera. Again, add, um, duplicate your background, add some blur to your background. I'm going to add in some more shadows again, we'll create a new layer, sample 10%, blending mode multiply, and I'm going to paint in more shadows. Oh, and his toes are painted off a little from um, the last digital, so let's paint those back in a little bit. Still, see, this is, um, where, but I forgot to change my opacity, you don't want really any of that other layer showing because you can see the fuzziness from the first, so it's going to take a bit longer to do this digital because you have to go around and dial in quite a bit more to get rid of all that, which I am not going to do all of it because that takes a little while. Um, this is why I always try to use the same or similar layer when I'm doing digitals. Um, some of it you can't see. But again, I would clean up, like his arm's a little rigid right there, I would clean all of that up. 
um, needs to be a little bit of shadow right here too. Still brushing off that blanket or that fur layer. Okay. Very quick edit, but okay. So I feel like he needs a little bit more shadow on his actual body. Um, so I would create another layer, multiply, out click Alt, and click between the layers, and that will make it so it's only on baby and not on your background layer. Um, and then I like to do it. I like to sample the skin in one of the um, more shadow parts and just paint on more shadows, not, not too much. I think that looks good, good enough, just to show you the gist of it before and after. Okay, so now for the ones that are like this, um, these are good because you can photograph an entire bowl with a baby and just put the whole bowl into the image rather than having to cut the baby out of it. Um, so I'm actually going to take this one. Um, and I'm going to flatten this real quick. Select this. Way easier than um, trying to select the baby. And there's a bit of shadow right there, so it's going to be a little harder over on that side, but that's okay. Okay. Just make sure to get all of the bowl. You can always paint off extra, but you need to make sure it's all selected. Okay, that looks good enough for now. I'm just gonna um, copy, paste. Lights coming from um, over here, so we're good on that. And then resize to cover. You want to cover that inside bowl. Or you can edit into it. That's completely up to you. But I prefer to cover. It's easier. Okay. Create a layer mask. And clean up the edges. 100%. don't need to be perfect because I'm going to blur the edges too and it'll hide most of that. Okay. Select the image blur tool. Just go around and blur the edge of the bowl. Done unless you want to do any more editing or maybe make the bowl um, match a little bit better to the outside bowl. But as far as compositing the baby into an image like this, it's a lot easier if you do the entire, entire bowl. This one, this one. 